Hey guys, got another gun video for you today. Another 1911. This right here is the Springfield Range Officer. And this is the operator model. See, it does have the rail. But this is a very, very good 1911 on a budget. I believe this is anywhere around $800, $900, right in that price range. And for the money, I would say for under $1,000, this in my opinion, is the best 1911 you could get. A lot of guys will ask that. I see that on Facebook, on the gun groups. Uh, they'll say, what's a good entry-level 1911? And I'll see them say, like, Rock Island Armory. And I'm like, they're okay, but for a little bit more that's still affordable, I would say get the Springfield Range Officer. This is one of the tightest fitting factory 1911s. Good quality. Just overall good gun. Uh, so this right here is the... I believe it's the loaded I thought it was called but it says operator but as you can see it's a little bit different it does have an accessory rail and it comes with fiber optic front sight and a two dot rear sight the regular just standard range officer does not have the rail and it also has target sights an adjustable rear and just a front post sight I kind of like this one a little bit better uh, it's a little bit more not too much but I would say I'm just not a big fan of target sights um uh, I never really adjust them anyway. I'll just have a different point of aim. So I'd recommend getting this model. But as far as 1911s, um, it's pretty nice. Some of the things you got, you get the skeletonized trigger, skeletonized hammer. You do get a, a big thumb safety. It is not ambidextrous, but that's fine with me. I'm not left-handed. So I actually prefer not to have a ambidextrous safety. Uh, like I said earlier, you do have the accessory rail. Um, let me show you, it's clear. Yeah, this is a real tight fitting. Uh, does not have a full length guy rod. Uh, stainless steel barrel. Barrel bushing. Uh, you can get a full full guide rod if you want. Uh, some of my other 1911s had a full stainless steel guide rod. But this gun is tight fitting. I mean, there is no play at all from the slide to the frame. I mean, nothing at all. I haven't shot it yet. Still brand new. Picked it up a while ago. It's just been kind of sitting in my safe and I forgot about it. So I was like, you know what? I'll pull it out, do a, do a video on it. Show you guys. And the finish, it's like a parkerized finish. Um, it's nice. It's got a real nice look to it. It's almost like that classic 1911. It doesn't look like a World War II Model 1 or anything, but it's kind of close. I mean, it's cool. Nice grips. Does say range officer on the grip down there. I was thinking about replacing the grips on it, getting some VZ grips. I like those a lot. They're the G10 material. But this just has the classic look to it that I think is pretty cool. Um, what you get with it, it gets a seven round flush fit magazine. Uh, just a basic 1911 magazine. The case that it comes with, let me show you right here pretty nice Springfield always does give you a nice case let's open this up here so pistol was in there you get an extra magazine two mags um, cable lock nylon brass or nylon barrel brush little sample of Lucas gun oil I believe yeah Lucas gun oil replacement fiber optics it does have the red on there you can change it to the green if you like and if it ever falls off you have backup the replacement and then back here kind of hard to see you have the owner's manual behind the phone so nice case and i kind of was lazy when i got this springfield had an awesome promotion going on where for three or four months if you bought a one of their pistols within that time frame they would send you i think it was like four extra mags a holster and a magazine holster i did it for my XD Mod 2, however, I forgot to do it. Well, I kept pushing it off, and I forgot to do it for this. So I could have got an extra four magazines, a holster, and a magazine holster for free, which I just didn't do. So uh, Springfield, they always usually do once a year a gear promotion, something like that. It's kind of cool. All right, with the 1911... Um, Drop the hammer there. 
These, since this, this one especially is a very tight fitting gun, you're going to want to put some rounds to it to break it in. Most 1911s recommend a 200 round break in period. With this gun especially, I would put a, uh, I'd put a few hundred rounds before, you know, it's 100% reliable. Just because this one, I mean, there is no wiggle room at all. That slide is so tightly fitted to the frame, it's a tight fitting gun. Uh, this one I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break it down right now. Usually when I first get a new gun, I'll break it down, clean it, oil it up. But this one, it's so tight. I'm gonna shoot it first, get a couple hundred rounds through it before I break it down to clean it. It breaks down just like any other 1911. And since I'm showing you a 1911 on the topic of them, a lot of guys say, "Hey, you know, 1911s are cool, but they're kind of outdated now." I mean, this design is over 100 years old. But it's an awesome design. I mean, I think it's a sexy gun. It's comfortable to shoot. It's got some weight to it. Uh, but guys, like, get a Glock, you know, 45. So, I mean, the debate on calibers will never end, but I don't have any 9mm 1911s. All my 1911s are 45. It's a good round. I like it. But as far as guns, I mean, I like all different type of guns. I like Glocks. I like M&Ps, like handguns, like revolvers, like ARs, shotguns, uh, old World War II stuff. I had a K98. I sold it. Um, I just like all different types of firearms. But this one is very good. I mean, for under $1,000, you really can't go wrong. I've wanted this gun for a while before I started getting some other guns. I'm happy I finally have one. Uh, let me show you some Mylar 1911s right now. I got a decent collection of 1911s. Let's see how they stack up. This is the uh, Sig Emperor Scorpion. This right here is another Springfield. This is the TRP. So, pretty decent collection. Uh, I, I do like 1911s. Some other ones that I would like to get to my for my collection is a Kimber. You know, I, I've kind of talked a lot of shit about Kimber. I don't like some of their entry-level guns, but some of their high-end ones are real nice. I believe it's the Kimber Desert Warrior SOC TFS pistol, if I got that right. But that is a really nice gun. It runs, I want to say, about $1,800, but that is the one Kimber I'd probably buy. And for another 1911 that I like a lot, it just came out, is another Springfield. It's the Springfield Silent Operator. That gun's expensive. It's over two grand. Uh, if you want to check that one out, it's nice. I mean, I've never handled one. I've just seen it on the internet. But that's a beautiful gun. Again, that's the Springfield Silent Operator. But back on the subject of this gun, I mean, it is a great gun. I haven't shot this one. Um, I've shot other Springfields. I've handled this one a bunch. If you're thinking about getting one, go ahead and do it. I mean, it's a nice gun. Check out that side alignment right there. So I'm going to keep this video short. Like I said, I'm not going to break it down, show you how to do any of that. There's plenty of videos out there. But if you like this gun, go ahead and buy one. Shoot one first if you can. If you got a friend who has one or a range that's rent one, shoot it. You'll be very happy with it. Accurate. 1911s are super accurate. Uh, real, tr real short trigger pull. They don't kick that bad. I mean, it's a 45, but it's such a heavy gun. Long barrel, five inch barrel on it. They're not, they're not that bad to shoot. They're actually very enjoyable to shoot. But if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. Leave a comment down below. Tell me, tell me what you guys think about this gun or any other 1911s that you like. I did mention Kimber, and to be honest, I really don't like any Kimbers except for that one. I mean, there are some nice ones. I'm just not a big fan of Kimber. Everyone kind of thinks that Kimber is the best. But I think you're paying for the name a little bit. And same with Colt. Uh, Colt, their quality control has gone way down. Some people hear the name Colt and be like, oh, Colt's the best. A Colt 45 is the best 1911. And that's not true. Maybe back in the day that was, but that's not true. So many different... The, the rights of Colt manufacturing have been sold like three or four times, I believe. So it's not made by... a like a Colt was back in you know the 60s or 70s. So I'm not a big fan of Colts. Uh, I actually don't even like the way they look. I'm sure they shoot good. 
Um, a lot of people use them for competition or whatnot. And then you also have your real high in 1911s. You got Nighthawk Custom. You know, they're they're night nice guns, but they're just way too expensive. <laughs> like I said, for that kind of money, I'd rather have that Springfield Silent Operator. All right, guys, well, I'm going to wrap this video up. Hope you liked it. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Really appreciate all the subscribers. My channel's growing a little bit, so I'm going to keep pumping out videos. And uh, hopefully I get more viewers. Thanks, guys.